Many people look at getting a software job as something very complicated, but you all know me by now that I don't like complications and I like to keep things as simple as possible. So here is my simple method that I used and always use when I'm looking for a job. So the main job boards that I look at are Glassdoor, LinkedIn, and Indeed. The pros of Glassdoor is you can get a good understanding of a company before you even apply. As you know, Glassdoor is used for employers and employees to give ratings on a company. And these ratings and reviews can be very honest, whether good or bad. So by being able to get a sense of this company is actually a good place to work or not before you apply is always a pro. They also have an easy apply options for some positions. So easy apply is you upload your resume, kind of like a profile to Glassdoor. And if you see a position that you like, if it has an easy apply option, all you have to do is click a button and it'll send your resume to that company. The cons for this board is some companies choose not to post their positions here. Now there may not be a specific reason for this, they just may not choose to post them there. And compared to the others that I'll talk about, I feel like this board doesn't get updated as frequently as some of the other boards. The next one I'll talk about is LinkedIn jobs. So the pros, very widely used. Jobs are typically updated pretty frequently since it is widely used. And I also noticed that some positions have an easy apply option. So if you are using this easy apply option, make sure you have your entire profile filled out with all your positions and your descriptions and everything, just like you would on a resume. So that way they get a full profile once you submit the application. So the cons, it's very hard to get a sense of the company through this job board. Like I mentioned on Glassdoor, you can look at a rating and you can see generally how people feel about working there. But on LinkedIn, you don't really know. The only thing you can kind of see is the maybe the size of the company and that's really about it. So the next one I'll talk about is Indeed. Now Indeed has been around forever and it's still very, very popular for employers and people that are looking for jobs. So the pros obviously is still very widely used. It's extremely popular. Some positions may list, you know, an estimated salary range, which may not be 100% accurate, but either way, it's still a good idea on you know, what you could expect to get paid if you were to get the position. And it's very well trusted. So the cons, in my opinion, the interface is not, not the best. It kind of has a very old school feel to it. And I noticed that a lot of times I would search for specific positions. It would give me a lot of results, but a lot of those results may not really be exactly what I was looking for exactly what I search for. Also indeed it's like a mass job board. So what I mean by that is you have companies putting postings there, you have you have staffing agencies putting postings there. So you may start to see duplicate job postings because there's so many positions posted there. Now these job boards, none of this really matters. And this is extremely important, so listen to me closely. I never apply on these job boards. What I do, I use these to see which positions are out there. I go to the company website and I apply directly to the company. Do not apply through the job boards. I've had great success doing this, and this is a route that I always take. It takes a little more work when you do this because you have to go to each company, you have to go through their career section, find the position, and fill out a separate application for each job. But in my opinion, I feel like it's definitely worth the extra amount of time. Sure, I could go on Easy Apply and send 20 resumes off in 10 minutes, but I may be wrong on this. If somebody is working at HR and you see this video, please comment if I'm correct or not. But I feel like the application that I submit directly to the company almost get like first preference. I don't know if some of these applications from the job board get lost, but anytime I apply directly to the employer, I either get a response saying, hey, you didn't match what we wanted, you didn't match the requirements that we were looking for, or they reach out to me for an interview, but I always get some type of response. Also, don't let job requirements scare you. So there's part of the job requirements that yes, you do need. But in my opinion, I feel like a lot of this is kind of fluff. Now, I'm not sure if it's to scare people away or you know to limit the amount of applications they get, but sometimes I would read job descriptions and I'm like, there's no way they are expecting someone to know all of this. So the only thing I looked at was the number of years. When I first started, I would look for anything that was zero to two years. If it was zero to two years experience and it was in the language that I was looking for, which is obviously JavaScript and other front end languages, then I would apply to it. The next thing is quantity. I would apply to so many positions when I was trying to get into the software field. It's not even funny, but there was a specific reason for this. I had to give myself enough chances to get a response to get interviews. If I didn't get interviews, there was no way for me to know if I was ready or not to be employed. There was no way for me to know what I needed to learn. So I casted my net very wide. So don't be surprised if you end up applying to way more jobs than you anticipated. The first one is always the hardest, but after you get that first job, things will get a lot easier. But you have to get that first job. And the only way to do that is to apply as much as you can and to be persistent. So regarding your resume, if you don't have any technical experience, that's not a deal breaker, but if you do have any technical experience, 
for any position that you have, make sure that you list it somewhere on your resume. If you don't have any, that's okay too, but there are some things that you wanna make sure you do and add to your resume. The first thing is don't apply to any jobs if you don't have a section that's related to any projects that you've built and regarding anything that you've been learning. I mentioned it before, but ideally you will wanna build your own simple website and upload any projects that you've made to your website and your GitHub account. Upload all the code to your GitHub, even the code to your website, because technically that's a project in itself. So you wanna make sure you add that to your GitHub as well. And once you have these set up, add a section for your website name, describe the projects that you have on that website, and also list the section to where you have the URL for your GitHub account. With this section where you're listing your projects, this is very important. You wanna make sure you describe what the project is, like what's the functionality, and you wanna list the languages that you use in these projects. This is the most important thing. So if I'm looking at a JavaScript position, and it tells me that they're looking for JavaScript, React, and HTML experience, I need to make sure I have some projects or at least a project on my resume that has JavaScript, React, and HTML because these resumes are scanned. You're not the only person that's applying to these positions. There are a lot of people that are applying. So these companies have to have a quick way of scanning resumes and that's with using keywords. If you don't have any keywords, you don't stand a chance as far as even getting to the next step of during an interview process. So by putting this section at the top of your resume, they'll see what you've done because they typically may only look at even the first page, but it'll draw their attention and it'll show that you are actively trying to get into the software field. So make sure you update your resume if you don't have any technical experience try to make it as technical as you can with the things that you're working on and the things that you have worked on now regarding the current state of the market i'm not going to pretend like this job market is the best even though the software industry is getting hit hard too as far as layoffs and hiring freezes everyone is feeling it the economy is just not in a good state right now but there are two ways that you can approach this and this really depends on your perspective on things if you haven't gotten your job yet you can either keep preparing so that way you're ready once the economy does turn around and it'll be easier if you get a position or you can be someone that says, well, you know, it's not worth the time. Oh, the economy is bad. Like, what's the point? And then when the economy does turn around and companies do start hiring again, you still have to catch up. Now, me personally, that's not the route that I take. Anything that's in my control, I'm gonna do it to try to be ready. I can't control the job market. I can't control the economy, but I can control how much I'm learning. I can't control how much I'm building, how much I'm applying, and that's what I like to do. But this depends on your perspective. So in my opinion, if you've made the commitment that you wanna get into software, if you haven't already, then you have to keep working and you have to keep building until the time is right, even if the job market is not the best. There are some companies that are still out there hiring. You know, everybody doesn't wanna work for Google. There are more companies out there that are hiring for software positions. But this is the route that I take, and this is the route that I have taken every time that I wanna look for a position from when I first got into software, even into now. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If you liked the video, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this.